Welcome back. As we turn to the private life of an Olympic champion. Two years ago, 14-year-old gymnast Dominic Mosciano was America's sweetheart. Today, she's engaged in a different kind of competition, a public fight for her freedom. The story from our Dan Broden. <laughs> Next up on floor, Dominique Mochianu. At the 1996 Olympics, Dominique Mochianu helped the U.S. gymnastics team win the gold medal. Now, at age 17, she's suing her parents for her independence, charging them with squandering her earnings and stealing her childhood. I don't believe this, this comes from her, it's from, you know, from other people. Uh, I think Dominique is uh, what we see in this uh, allegation, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not her. Mochiano's parents admit spending several million from her trust fund, but say a large part went into building this gym with Dominique's blessing. We cannot recognize her. Since she left, you know, if she's saying things like that, they're not, they're not coming from her. It's not Dominique. On Wednesday, Dominique told a Houston newspaper, quote, I kill myself training and going to school. And what is he doing with my money? They haven't been working since 1996. Where does their income come from? Me. She's, she's just a child and she's just a minor. For now, a temporary restraining order prevents Dominique's parents from contacting her. She is in a secure place at this time. It is our intent, as long as she desires to stay in that secure place, that she will stay there. But it just breaks my heart on both sides that this would happen. And I see a family being torn apart over money and it's a typical American story. We love her very much. And I hope uh, she changed her mind and come home and uh, start training again. Joining us in Houston is Catherine Scardino, the attorney for Dominic's father, Dimitri Mosciano. Also in Houston is Roy Moore, Dominic Mosciano's attorney. With us in Hartford, Connecticut is former gymnastics coach Bill Jones. Joining us in New York is trial attorney extraordinaire Linda Kinney. Mr. Moore, we'll go out to you first. Uh, tell us about Dominic Mosciano um, at this point. Tell us about this lawsuit that she's filed and, and uh, what's the substance of that lawsuit, sir? Okay, Johnny, it, uh, you've got a 17-year-old young lady who simply wants to be emancipated, who wants to be allowed to contract in her own right to handle her own affairs and not be held under the thumb of her parents. And she has had to, she's asked questions, they haven't been answered. Uh, she feels like... Roy, what kind, of, what kind of questions has she asked that haven't been answered? She's asked, what, what happened to the money? Where is the money? How much money do we have? What are we doing? Uh, and uh, what she tells me, that her father says, oh, don't worry about it. You know, I'm taking care of it. It's, a, it's our deal. Uh, just don't worry about it. Well, Roy, this, is, this is a pretty drastic action, you know, at this point, to get to this point. Uh, how do you, under your analysis, how did they get to this point so that she has to go, have to go into court for something like this? I think it is absurd if it were, I don't understand why Mr. Mosciano won't sign the papers and let her be emancipated at uh, age 17 and to run her own affairs. Me thinks he protests too much. <clears throat> well, let me ask you, let me ask you, Catherine, what, what about that? Uh, Roy Moore throws down the gauntlet and says, well, we can resolve this whole thing by signing and emancipating and letting her go on her own way. There's some unanswered questions, that sort of thing. What's your response to that? Well, as I was talking to, uh, Dominique's mother earlier this afternoon. The problem with all this is that the, it's not just a simple emancipation lawsuit. Um, because of the verbiage that Mr. Moore has put in his petition, it, you know, saying you sign this because you, Camille, Camelia, and you, D Dimitri, have been poor parents. You have done something that's been wrong. You have mismanaged these funds. You have done this. You have done that. And as soon as we get the removal of these disabilities, we're going to sue you for mismanagement of your of, of my money. Well, it, it seems to me that what he's done is he's put both parents with their arms up against the wall. And how can they possibly agree to anything in a petition that says what his says? It, it can't, it, we can't do that. Well, Roy, interesting point, Roy. You know, they're not going to admit that they did anything wrong at this point. If the emancipation, that's one thing. But uh, Catherine says, look, there's something else here. We, we're gonna, we may end up being sued, may be accused of misappropriation of these funds, and another lawsuit's back, likely to come. Is that right? No. Very truthfully, this young lady doesn't want to do anything to harm her parents. 
if she, all she wants to do is start over. Well, then why did you put that in the petition? Because it was necessary, and we believe it to be true, but you know as well as I do, uh, Catherine, that if a lawsuit is settled, it's gone. Uh, if We'll amend it, do anything you want to do. Just, just let her be emancipated well, and handle her own no, things. See, Catherine and Roy, maybe right on this show tonight, we can have a settlement here. You know, this will be, I, feel, I feel like a mediator here. Let me, <laughs> let me ask whether the two deal. of you are thinking about that. Let me go to Linda Kenny. She, she's so knowledgeable in this area. Linda, you see the, the, the beginnings here of a, res, a resolution of this problem? Well, you know, Johnny, the only difference here, and I would say to both of the attorneys out there, is that this involves a family situation. If this Absolutely. were people that didn't know each other in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you charge, you were in a bit. Let's say you and I were in a business deal, and all of a sudden you won't give me an accounting of my receipts, or you're using my name, or uh, reverse, I'm using exactly. your name, <laughs> would be more likely. And, and we seem to have some funny business going on. There's no doubt that a court would say, look, a receiver should be appointed, and this should be a fair accounting. So the only difference here is a family situation, and we know that when domestic violence occurs, for instance, it doesn't matter. When theft occurs, it doesn't matter. If murder occurs between family members, it doesn't matter. So that's the only difference. It involves money, but money can be taken from one another in a family. Well, well Catherine, what about that? I gave you a moment to think about this whole process. What, what do you think it's going to take to resolve this matter? It's obviously a, a family matter, and I think everybody would love to see it resolved if at all possible. Well, I do. And I, I, what Dimitri and what Camille want is they want their daughter back home. They feel like their daughter has been almost stolen from them. We have a temporary restraining order, which I might add, I'm going to try to dissolve that just as soon as I can get back in court. It is not properly done. It is not, the, the procedure was not followed under Texas law for getting a TRO, an ex parte TRO. Sure thing. Uh, the whole thing has gotten, I think it's been, I guess, somewhat blown out of proportion, and perhaps it has been, but Dimitri and Camille want their daughter back home. Their daughter Dimitri does tells not me he has, they, home, she though, has Catherine. never, she has not ever come to them and said, give me an accounting, tell me, I'll have some questions, I want to know what's going she's on. She's asked over and over and been told no, and she's terrified of this gentleman, even though she does well, love him. Well, then that's a totally different perspective from anybody that I have, ever, that I've spoken with that You're has any connection with people, MGI then, or that gymnastics group. Johnny, Nothing. can I just ask the lawyers well, a sir, question sir, here sir, with sir, regard to this? Ahead, and in terms of, of the procedure that you utilize down there, I see that there was a guardian ad litem, which means an independent third party, who signed some kind of verification that said it was in the best interest of this child that this petition be granted. Is that after there's an independent report to the court as to what the best interests of the child are? No, it looks, no. the guardian looks into it on her own and she makes the recommendation and she believes, from what I'm told, uh, Catherine knows uh, Ellen as well as I do, and that she also knows she's a very confident attorney that cares about young people. And still, once again, if he doesn't just want this young lady's money, then let her be independent, let her run her own outfit, and let her be emancipated. That's Roy, all we're asking. Johnny, Linda, all we want is for, right now is for Mr. Moore to follow the proper procedures. I am not asking him to do anything else. He's made all these allegations, which from my perspective are totally false. Secondly, I, I've seen nothing from his side that supports one single allegation that he's made that he's mismanaged any kind of funds whatsoever. If he thinks that Dimitri Macchiano has, has mismanaged these funds, show me what he's talking about. Does he have something other than a statement of a young lady who is, when I say 17, 17 as of September the 30th, she is barely 17. Well, Roy, let me, let me throw in something as an experienced lawyer for some 35, 36 years. You she know, if, if, you, if we persist and you go into court and there's actually a hearing at some point, it's going to further exacerbate, it seems to me, this problem between parent and child. I think, uh, again, without taking sides, Catherine is saying, look, if you got some documentation, show us that. Let's talk about it and see if this can be resolved. Are you willing Johnny, to do we that? we don't have any documentation because we hadn't been able to get it because it hadn't been produced. Well, if then, this young Johnny, lady tells me he's done this, and she has no money, and she's deathly afraid of him, and certainly his behavior since the filing has indicated well, that he's I acting somewhat irresponsibly. Well, I want to know why he made the statement of Catherine? mismanagement of money in that petition. If he has no evidence, nothing. I want to know who came with her to visit with Mr. Moore. I want to know the 23-year-old Jeff, the 32-year-old Brian, both Pete Brian, who has absolutely nothing to do with that gym, gym whatsoever, <coughs> and this 23-year-old gym coach, 
who has been a total outside influence on this young girl. Why is, I mean, wh uh, who came with, ask him, who came Well, well Catherine, with, you've got a lot of questions. Who's we're going to try to, just yeah. more, we're gonna try to get some answers to all those questions all right. when we come back. And we're also hoping to be joined by Dimitri Mosiano, Dominic's father, when we come back. Please stay tuned to Cochran and Company.